Hello everyone, this is Chai from the Bloomingdale Public Library, and today we're going to have a short discussion about the Windows Snipping Tool. So what is the Windows Snipping Tool? It is a utility for taking full or partial screenshots in Windows. It is included with all versions of Windows since Vista, however, we're going to be focusing on Windows 11 today. I'm also going to take this opportunity to remind you that official support for Windows 10 is slated to end in 2025. So from Windows 11, there are essentially two versions of the Windows Snipping Tool, and I'm going to refer to them as the default version and the store version. The default version is built into Windows 11, and it's intended to only be accessed with shortcut keys. If you go searching for the application itself, you're probably not going to find it because the executable file is buried in a highly restricted folder that you should probably just leave alone. When you take a screenshot with the Windows Snipping Tool, it goes to a place in memory called the clipboard, where you then must use a second application to paste it into a file. And for that purpose, most people use uh, either Microsoft Paint, Microsoft Word, or applications like that. The store version of the Windows Snipping Tool is a bit different, and it's available as a free download from the Windows Store. When you download that version, it overrides the default version, so when you use the shortcut keys, you're going to get the store version's user interface. When you download the store version, you will be able to see that in the application list, and from there you can go ahead and put the snipping tool in some place more useful, like the desktop or the taskbar, or even pin it to the start menu. The store version includes additional functionality like being able to record with sound and opening up multiple snip windows. You can also use the store version to edit, save, and share your SNPs. While more functional, the store version tends to run a little bit more slowly and I think it's a little bit wonky. And there are reports of people getting pulled out of full screen applications or having the snipping tool crash and even people reporting uh, running into the blue screen of death. So they're probably still getting the kinks out. Um, otherwise, if you were using the store version and wanted to revert back to the default version, all you need to do is uninstall it and the shortcut keys will go back to the original interface. Alright, so let's go ahead and try out the default Windows snipping tool. To do that, all you need to do is hold down the shortcut keys, and in this case there are three of them. They are the Windows key, the Shift key, and the S key. So once you hold down the Windows key, the Shift key, and the S key all at once, you'll notice that the screen gets a little darker and we have a toolbar up at the top. The icons in the toolbar represent different modes for taking your snip. The one on the left is rectangular mode, which is for drawing rectangles around your selection. Freeform mode is for drawing a custom shape around your selection. Window mode which is where you'll simply click on a window and the contents of the window will be copied to the clipboard. And then full screen mode, which will take a screenshot of the full screen and add that to the clipboard. The X will cancel out, as will the escape key. So let's start out by taking a rectangular snip. For that, you just make sure you're in rectangular mode, click and hold the left mouse button, and then drag the cursor to create a rectangle around what you want to snip. Once you have your rectangle the way you want it, just let go of the mouse button, and you'll notice it kind of flickered white there to indicate what was copied to the clipboard. And that's it. So once you have your snip on the clipboard, the task is to get it out and put it somewhere more useful. So for that, most people use paint. So I'm just going to do a search for paint, open it up, and now all you got to do is paste it in there. And you need either go to Edit, Paste, or you can use the shortcut, which is Control-V, and that's what I prefer to do. So that's what I'm going to do, Control-V, and there you go. Your snip is pasted into a paint file. And what most people do from here is use the crop command to crop it, and then file, save as, choose whatever format you like, give it a name, and hit save. P 
piece of cake, right? Go ahead and close that. Let's go ahead and try the freeform mode. So again, Windows Shift S. Choose freeform mode. Click and hold the left mouse button and draw your shape. Let go when you're done. And again, I'm going to open up Paint. And use Control V to paste. And there you go. If you're someone that takes a lot of snips, it might be worth it to pin the paint application to the taskbar. Again, I'm going to close out. This time, let's try Windows mode. So for this, we're going to need some windows. So I'm going to go ahead and open some windows. I'm going to hit the Windows key, Shift S. Select Windows mode. And you'll notice as I move my cursor over each window, it kind of highlights it to let you know which one you're selecting. And to select the window, all you do is click it with the left mouse button. Again, it flickers white to indicate it's in the clipboard. This time, let's go ahead and paste it into Word. So if you were working on writing a paper and you wanted to put a snip into your document, you can certainly do that. Again, I'm just going to hit Control V to paste. And there you go. I close out. And just for completion's sake, we'll go ahead and do full screen mode as well. Again, Windows key, Shift S. Windows mode. And you'll notice nothing really happened there. Maybe you noticed the white flash. But basically, once you choose full screen, it takes the full screen shot. There's nothing after that. So again, Windows Shift S. See if you can see it this time. I'm going to hit the full screen mode and watch for the white flicker. There you go. So we'll go to paint. Paste it with control V. And you see we have the full screen. And that is how you use the default Windows snipping tool. Alright, so that's primarily what I wanted to cover. I just wanted to demonstrate the Windows Snipping Tool to anyone that hasn't heard of it or used it before. And for those of you that knew what it was and couldn't find it in Windows 11, I wanted to help you find it. Nonetheless, I'll give you a quick look at the store version of the Snipping Tool. Now, if you were following along with me and you did your Windows Shift S shortcut keys and you got a toolbar that looked like this, then your Snipping Tool is already the store version. I'm honestly not sure if manufacturers are prepackaging their PCs with the store version of the snipping tool or not. Nonetheless, if you go to your app list and you want to find the snipping tool here, it's going to be under S. If you don't see it there and you would like to try out the store version, what you do is under M, you go to the Microsoft Store. And at the top here, do a search for the snipping tool. It should look like this guy here with the scissors and the red squares. Click on that. Apparently the store is not working for me. But you just want to make sure that it's developed by the Microsoft Corporation. And then in the top right corner, there'll be a button to get or download. Just click on that. And then you can click on open from there. I'm going to go ahead and close the store for now. And before I do the shortcuts, we're going to go to the app list and have a look at the snipping tool here. And if you're someone that uses the snipping tool a lot, I would take advantage of the fact that you can actually move it to your taskbar by clicking and dragging it and then letting go. Now we have the snipping, snipping tool on the taskbar. You can also click and drag it onto the desktop to create a shortcut on your desktop. Or if you're someone that uses the quick start menu, you can also right click on it and pin it to the start menu. But as you can see, it's already there. And my option here is to unpin it instead. So there we go. So we've got it on the desktop, in the taskbar, on the quick start menu, in the app list, all those places. But at the same time, if you hit Windows Shift S, you still get a toolbar. And it is a little bit different 
than the default. So in this case, we've got a camera and a camcorder in its own little rectangle here. With the camera selected, you have the option to do this little drop down here for the modes, and these are all the same as before, and they work the same. We also have a camcorder, which only has rectangular mode, and that will let you do a recording. I'm going to skip that for now. And instead of using the shortcut keys, I'm going to open up the app with the icon. You see when I do that, we have instructions to do the Windows Shift S shortcut keys. And if I do that, everything will work the same as it did before, except with the different toolbar. However, we also have this option for a new file. So let's go ahead and click New. You see it disappears. We get the toolbar up here again. You can choose a new mode if you like, but I'm just going to go ahead and use rectangular mode and create a rectangle. And you'll see once I do, the snipping tool actually has its own little editor built in. We've got a marker here. If you click on it, there's options for colors and sizes as well. There's a highlighter, which is basically the same thing, except it's translucent, and there's fewer options for the colors. An eraser to erase. Shape tool. A crop tool. Hit the check mark when you're done etc. I'll let you play around with the rest as you like. You can do emojis. Uh, you can click the paint symbol here. This will move you over to paint. Just like that. I'm going to X out. You also have options to save. Again, you can choose your file types. Give it a new name. Or copy to the clipboard. You click on the three dots. Again, there's a few more options. You can share it the way you would on a phone. You can actually open other files to edit in this little editor, but quite frankly, I would just use paint instead. Print option, and then if you go to settings, there are a bunch of toggles that again, I'll let you float through on your own. All right, one more thing real quick that I zoomed by initially, but it's one of the reasons you might want to use the store version of the snipping tool, and that's for recording. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Windows key, Shift S, and in the toolbar, I'm going to select the camcorder. With the camcorder selected, I'm going to draw a rectangle, and this rectangle is what we're going to be recording. Even after you draw the rectangle, you can click and drag to move it around, or use the cropping handles to adjust its size and shape. But once you have your rectangle all settled, then you need to look at your audio options. So you see my microphone is actually muted. It's probably because I'm using it for OBS right now. But if you click on the down arrow there, if you have multiple options, you'll see them here. You also have an option to use the system audio or not. So again, if you mute it, you see the line. If not, no line. And once you have the rectangle and your audio options all settled, you can go ahead and hit the Start button. Once I do, it's going to disappear. And I'm also going to get a countdown that you're not going to see, but I'll still walk through it nonetheless. So I'm hitting the Start button now. I'm getting a countdown now. I'm recording. You can pause the recording, which I did now. Start recording again, and stop recording with the big red square. There's also a trash can to cancel recording as well. So now you can start seeing what I was doing. And you're going to get the editing win window, whether you use the shortcut keys or not, when you do a video recording. But as you can see here, I goof around a little bit. I move the mouse out to pause, bring it back in, and there you go. So if you wanted to do some video editing, you can go into ClipChamp. I'm not going to go into that today. Otherwise, if you're all set, go ahead and hit the disk icon to save. Give it a name. You don't have any options for file type, but MP4 is usually good.
hit save, and you're done. And with that, I think we'll call it a day. I hope you learned something, I hope you had fun, and I hope you have a good day.